So we have this problem in rope bondage that it's really useful to make cuff-like shapes, which we call a single column tie. And we teach a few single column ties on this channel already. The problem is, is you can only tie one single column tie using that technique per rope. And you might want to go off and say cuff one thing to something else. So to do that, you need a different technique. And one of those techniques is called a hojo cuff. This technique has popped up a couple of times already in, in our videos. I really want to go into it in detail though because there's a couple of different laws governing it. It's not super complicated, but I feel like if you isolate it and look at it in and of itself, it's going to make tying it and untying it a lot easier and it's going to mean you can creatively reinterpret it for whatever you need it for down the line. Hojo Cuff is referring to Hojo Jitsu, which is a method of arrest using rope in Japan that was used for hundreds of years. The problem is, is it's very hard to characterize a Hojo Jitsu technique. If you're learning it in the West, you're probably going to learn it through Japanese Jiu Jitsu, which encourages people to, once they've learned the technique, to creatively reinterpret what they've learned. So having any kind of accurate record of, oh, well, this is the cuff they're using Hojo Jitsu, is um, going to be spotted at best. But also, if you look at the uh, Ashley's drawings, you can see that there's been various different ways of creating a cuff like shape, some of which look like a hojo cuff, some look very, very different. You want to go a bit deeper on the topic of hojo jitsu? I recommend, as a starting point, checking out Fabiola's Kimbakanomicon podcast. She's got a couple of episodes where we talk about it, and she's very much more upon the, the history and the language than I am, considerably more so. So, if you're interested in approaching things in like a grounded way then i recommend checking that out Let's see how this thing works we'll start simple and build it up i already tied a cuff here nice normal single column tie now i want to make a second cuff on this wrist but i can't tie another single column tie so i'm just going to go around and then go over and under into the inside of the cuff and pull through and this makes a ad hoc cuff. Now, interesting thing about this is it stays intact as long as the tension remains even on the line going into the cuff and coming out of the cuff. What do I mean by that? How can it not have even tension? Have a look what happens if Star moves her right hand closer to her left hand, adding slack to the line going into the cuff. As you can see, it makes our hojo cuff collapse. Now let's see what happens when the line coming out of the cuff, the one in my hand, goes slack. The smallest movement of Star's left hand makes the cuff collapse onto her. This might continue working as a piece of bondage, but we've lost all control of tension, so it might be pretty dangerous. Luckily for us, if we want to keep tension, but not keep hold of the end of the rope, we've got various options. Here I am, finishing that single wrap hojo cuff again and I'm going to just continue tying with it because if I keep tying with the end of this rope and there's tension on it then the hojo cuff on Star's left hand won't collapse. I'm making a nice simple prisoner belt just to prove my point. So how else can I keep tension? I can go back to the original cuff and go through it. And by doing that, I'm keeping tension on the hojo cuff, which means it's not going to collapse. I can reinforce this further by continuing the going backwards and forwards. And if I wrap these together, they are less likely to move. So that also adds a little bit of security as well. And because I'm just showing this for a demo, I'm just going to finish off here. As you can see, structurally, it holds together nicely. Finally, I can put a hitch straight after the hojo cuff. So I create two parallel lines. My hand reaches in between and pulls the rope through. And I'm really careful to put my hand on the inside of the hojo cuff when I'm closing that hitch in. Let's have a look at what happens if I don't put my hand on the inside of the hojo cuff when I'm closing the hitch. The force of the hitch moving inwards also collapses the hojo cuff, meaning it locks down on her wrist and means that it's potentially dangerous. So far, I've been tying my hojo cuff with a single wrap. What happens if I want to have more than one wrap? How does that affect things? You can see that this configuration looks slightly different to what we're used to. I need to lift this middle wrap 
and then I use my finger to come underneath the line going in and then with my finger I can wrap around to do the over and under part and again the same rules apply in terms of tension you need to hold tension on the line going in and the line going out and it will stay a cuff this stage of picking up this middle line is important because it allows us to choose how tight we want the cuff to be so for example here I'm doing a ridiculously big cuff this cuff is completely ineffective but it gives you an idea of how much control you have I'm going to make something which is a lot smaller like this Note how when I'm wrapping this, I'm not wrapping tightly, I'm just placing it on the forearm. It's the control of that middle line that sets the tension, not how tight you wrap it. And you'll notice, after I pull this rope through, that what's holding it together is this tight turn that the rope makes around the balance. Before we go any further, we need to acknowledge that if you don't remove this cuff in the right order, getting it off is a pain in the ass. Have a look at what happens if I untie the last rope. As soon as tension is relieved, everything locks down, which makes it hard for me to pull the rope out. Same thing here, as soon as the rope gets pulled out, instant collapse. If I want to avoid this happening, I can keep one finger inside the cuff. See how this avoids it from collapsing and makes it a lot smoother for me to untie. Same thing from a different angle. One finger on the inside gives you space to work. Then the rest of the rope comes off nice and evenly. Okay, so to finish with, what happens if we want an even thicker cuff? So you see here, I'm going to make three wraps around. And I run into a bit of a problem here because I can't do my usual thing of pinching the middle wrap because we've got two middle wraps and they just don't pull out in the same way because the tension isn't even. So instead, what I want to do is, is tie around my own fingers to make the cup as thick as I want it to be. And then because I've got that gap, it's going to be easier for me to go over and under and complete the cuff. There we go. Hey friends, hope that was useful. Places like YouTube, Instagram, advertisers, they are not a fan of ours. So the only way we get any real financial support is through our Patreon. If you feel like you want to support us a little bit, it gives a small donation, uh, we'd really appreciate that. And there's also several goodies over there as well for people who support us. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.